Hi. Welcome to Jade Kind Gaming. My name is Adam. Today I'm going to be unboxing, looking at, flipping through the Immersive Battle Maps book uh, by Yaro Studios. I uh, just got this from Kickstarter, um, and it'll be coming out in general, it looks like, here fairly soon, and I'm a little hopeful. Um, so I'll be opening this up, and when I got it, they also made some packs of vinyl stickers, basically, uh, like the old color forms, if you remember from a, being a kid that were like the, you'd peel and you could re remove them around on the, you know, smooth surface that they came with um, to add details to it. Well, they had a couple. Uh, they had one that was... Um, spell effects that I got, and then they also had, uh, I think, like, uh, one that was actually, like, objects that you could use to clutter up the scene. And so, because those were not uh, wrapped, I figure I'll start with those, as I've already kind of taken a look at them, although I haven't tried them yet. Um, anyways, let's just sort of start here with these. Uh, and I will say, having seen them, I almost, I kind of wish that I would have gone with the other ones. Uh, it's assuming they work. So, um, I am assuming that not only will they work on the book itself, but they will also probably work on other things uh, that have that kind of surface, such as, you know, Pathfinder has their flip mats that have that same surface that's got that slick, glossy feel, and likewise the Pathfinder flip tiles. So I pulled uh, one of those out, thinking, well, let's just try. Like I said, we'll look at them, but I was like, the thing I haven't done is peeled any off and tried to use them. So yeah, they come off there, and they have a clear background. And then you can peel it back off. Yeah, no, that, <laughs> as uh, as intended, it seems. Uh, what I wanted to try is this crater, for example. <laughs> I don't want a well in the middle of the town. I want a crater. Well, now I have one. Um, and like this is one of the ones in here that I really liked. Um, and let's just kind of take a look through some of these and we'll discuss some things. Because uh, these are spell effects, and some of them are cool. Uh, this one here, it's a bunch of little bitty little uh, skeletal hands. I was like, that's cool. And then there's these that are like bushes or something. D big circle of difficult terrain, maybe. Alright, I can see some uses. Things like this are just like a magic sigil. Cool. Um, you got the crater and like what looks like a boulder that went down and like a scraped Wreck in the ground, and maybe these cracks in the ground is maybe what these are. Those are cool. Then you get things like these rays, which I guess, if you wanted to use like a, maybe a laser going through a hull, is my best guess for those. And then there's things like this. This is like musical notes. It seems like, almost would be like maybe if you had a, a cone effect spell, but that would be something that you wouldn't need to lay down. So, I mean, my best guess for that is, like, if you have an item or something in the room that is giving off that magical effect, you can use that to mark the area where it's a constant effect. This is vague enough of just sort of weird, fiery thing. That's all right. These are wings, which if you put them down, not only are they staying in a stationary spot on the map, but they'll be below whatever character. So those ones are really weird. So, so some of them... Yeah, and then the mouth, I think, is just cool. I don't know what I'd use it for, but that is spooky and cool. Um, so yeah, it's like variable usefulness. Um, there's four sheets of these in total. Uh, just general spikes, cool. Um, some more little marks, all right. Um, this one is definitely a cone of what is like... Sparkles, it looks like. 
which I mean is only vaguely cone-shaped, so that can just be an area that has a magical effect. That's sufficiently cone-shaped for whatever that is. Uh, but other of these are just, you know, magical markings, specific, you know, having in this, you know, if your magical weapon or magical hand is moving around, the color forms are not the best, you know, thing to use for it. It's more things that are going to be stationary that I feel like this is most useful for. A fireball? Probably not going to be something you're wanting to just mark on the map and leave there. Um, but otherwise, some general large magical circles just to mark effects. You know, definitely cool. Um, sort of circle of stones. Cracked, maybe burnt area on the ground. Weird magical spiral. You know, they don't necessarily... See, a lot of them don't seem like specific spells or anything. Some of them are generally useful. Others, I'm like, I'm not quite sure where I'd use it, you know, what I'd use it for. Um, but they're just interesting options of things to mark magical areas on your map. The one reason I'm almost kind of sad about it is this one. Um, there's a sp and, and this is the one that I saw that I was really excited for it. And it is largely the reason I decided on this pack instead of the other pack. Because there's a spell that I have a player that likes to use, Hunger of Hadar, creates an area that, you know, does magic, black, you know, <laughs> tentacly, uh, far realm stuff. And it creates a 20 foot radius square. And now, assuming a, uh, a square is 5 foot, which is generally how it's played. If you put this to the corners, you'll notice it's only one inch further. You basically have to cut off half of it. Basically, instead of being 20 foot radius, it's 17 and a half foot radius. Slightly smaller than the spell that it brought to mind. Which, I mean, of course, they didn't promise anything with the spell, nothing like that. Um, it's just slightly not what I was hoping for. Uh, this one, you can't really see with it on here, so let me peel this one off and put it on a tile. Because the background is white, and so is the printing on this. But it's a web. So, you know, that could just be like a corner that has a web that in general useful. Um, and of course, if it's not the player who's specifically wanting their maximum radius of the spell, I can use this for my NPC's version of the spell. It's slightly smaller and looks beautiful. Um, otherwise, you got this thing that looks like, you know, some sort of soul river thing. You got electricity, green smoke. Uh, again, a fiery chariot is something I would think would probably want to move more. Um, this whatever scry or eyeball marking is cool. The general magical marking. Again, not so sure about the weapon as far as something that's stationary, but... And then you got this weird wind thing. If maybe there's a wind blowing through a tunnel, you can mark it with that. So, I mean, there are definite uses for them. Oh, and I do want to point out with this one specifically... Just as far as the... And I mean, it's also present on this one. Let's, since this is one I talked about, let's use this one. You notice this colored area, so it doesn't technically, uh, it's cut before some of the, you know, without going all the way to the art fading out, so that is another thing to note. Um, uh, then we got, of course, this weird big magic cratery thing, um, more wings, again, weird, uh, crystal circle, some rubble, that's definitely useful. A swarm of bats is, again, not the best use for these color forms. Some electricity, cool. That's a general marker, like the medical symbol, basically. Electricity, a little black void, rubble. It's like some crystalline, a magic sphere. Um, again, these th seem like things you'd want to be moving around, but um, they look beautiful. Um, and then another just sort of orb of magical effect. 
So, they're cool. They look beautiful. And there's another set of the, them that I didn't get. Um, it's just, some, some of them I'm like, I'm not quite sure that they knew what the goal necessarily, what, what was the end goal, how were these going to be used, some of them were just made because they're pretty, and I'm like, I feel like, how am I going to use this on the table? Some of them I'll definitely find ways to use, and uh, the fact is, yes, they work on this surface here, uh, obviously they're going to work on these, but I'll put one on just to be sure when I'm opening it up. Uh, if they work on this, that means they will work on the Pathfinder flip mats. So if you're using any of those, you know, common uh, pre-made maps that I have showed off time and again, then it should work just fine as far as being able to attach them, adhere them, then remove them and reduce them later. Um, as far as storing them on these sheets, uh, just from my knowledge as a kid of the color forms, if I peel off the because basically it's a sheet of the vinyl on a backer. If you peel off the outside sheet, then you don't have to perfectly line it up each time. That's the best way to store them. From my childhood knowledge, where I had a large assortment of the color forms, little whatever licensed products they made when I was a kid. <laughs> I'm assuming everyone else grew up with those as well, and it wasn't just me, but who knows. Maybe you're all like, what are those? But it's, they're little queer vinyl things, and they, they stick, but can be reused. Anyways, now to the main product, to the book, the Immersive Battle Maps. Maybe you don't know what this is. It's a book of battle maps. First off, let's get some scale here. Here's the Dungeon Master's Guide. Here's the battle maps. As far as the actual exact width, it is the height of the Dungeon Master's Guide, and it goes up to his chin. So if I put it there, it is slightly larger than two Dungeon Master's guys, slightly taller than two of them on their side. It's a big book. When it shipped, I was like, that's a big box. I opened it up, and I'm like, oh, it's because it's a big book. Um, but let's uh, open it up, and I'll show you, hopefully, what's cool about it. <laughs> and uh, we'll take the plastic off here. And they got corner protectors in. Seem to have done an alright job, although that corner did get a bit damaged. It's not bad. Anyway, so we'll look for front art, Yarrow Studios. The back has some sort of samples of what it is. Um, and some Basically, they fold out to be 22 by 17 inch maps. It lays, lay flat bindings. You play directly inside of this book. Uh, it is a, I am Atlas Mundi. Welcome to my world. Thoroughly, highly detailed maps included in this book. And they list them. We'll look at them. A dry erase finish on every page. And uh, minimal, so they try to keep it subtle, I guess. A one inch grid that is pre printed, printed on them. So. Oh, I'm, I'm really excited. This is beautiful. Okay, uh, well this is going to be more of those same color forms, although this is now a little treasure pack. Um, so this will be what I use to test it out in this book, but this is really pretty. It has like a golden finish, like it's got like a real foil sheen to it. So you got, on this one, you got like a wall, so you can divide things, some stairs, some treasure chests, a uh, pack of treasure, a couple piles of treasure, sarcophagus, another wall, another treasure chest, uh, looks like some more just sort of crates of treasure, another sarcophagus, little bags of it, and then a big long log there. So another, uh, admittedly slightly smaller, but another sheet of that. Um, take only memories, leave only footprints, and bloodshed, and her heretic acts, and I guess take anything not bolted down at this movie. Alright then. 
Well, I think that's how that quote's supposed to go. Uh, and then we get uh, page numbers for the different... Um, you, know, or you get your table of contents, basically. And these are, of course, because of the t what they are, thick pages. So, folds out here. Uh, and pay from page one, might as well set it and just try these and... Yeah, same. Works in here as intended, of course. Um, so I don't forget it once I close the book. Let's remove it. Uh, but this here is uh, your first page. And you set it down, and you can sort of play in book as the troll forges forward. And your heroes fight atop the battlements. Yeah. But page one here has, you know, ballistas and, you know, maybe cauldrons of boiling oil and things that you have the top of a battlement. Perhaps there's, it's, this is above a, a city gate or something or whatever it may be. This is like a castle siege of defending and the attacking forces below. That's, that's, okay, yeah, I can see that being generally useful. Uh, page two is sort of a port, a dock, with uh, some ships. And so you got, you know, actual port itself, uh, with two different ships stocked here. One is a lot more uh, rugged, with lots of cannons on top, and sort of patched up and rough. Uh, and then you got your uh, neater, more sleek, looking ship here, and they're sort of, just sort of docked up here, above the surf. Ooh, okay, and then we got a um, maze, a labyrinth. Um, so, whatever, a center sort of pavilion, it's basically a hedge maze, so, who's saying if there's anything that really keeps them from just breaking through the hedges? Uh, or not, but uh, points of light throughout, um, various dead ends with rubble or uh, branches or whatnot. Um, yeah, general hedge maze there. We got sort of a bit of tavern, sort of. Clearly a building. You enter here, and a lot of these tables are sort of askew, which I feel is kind of odd. Um, feels like there's a bit of a either upper floor here that has more tables looking down. Maybe not so much a tavern, maybe more of a guild hall. You know, just sort of feels very loose as far as the uh, the environment, but. Kind of a guild hall, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and you can kind of probably hear that sound. They basically the pages. Uh, they're like the uh, if you've seen any of my unboxings of like the spell cards that Gale Force Nine does. How because the the laminated surface they kind of stick together. It's doing the same thing on these. Um, uh, you get sort of a river going across. There's a farm. Uh, with a pigsty here, a little farmhouse, you know, a little single room sort of farmhouse over here, and a path. Um, this is a good one to point out. You know, functional, definitely functional. The art is not the greatest in all these, and especially not consistent with some of them. Even within it, like these are very much drawn, and the water looks like it's a stock image that is used for it. And same thing with here, as far as you know, it almost looks like textures that are blended together. So you have your water texture and your grass texture, and then things that are kind of drawn to be made. Um, so there is definitely some inconsistencies with that. It's not. It is not the greatest art that one could hope for, uh, at least not on all the pages. Uh, we're still just getting through. 
uh, just starting it here. So there's much to go. Uh, but that is definitely something to note, is uh, some of the art is inconsistent. Um, but here we have, like, sort of a town center. Uh, you got some outer buildings and roads that go in from different directions and just sort of a collection of tents around a uh, statue. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, so sort of a little merchant center in the middle of town, um, which could be used whether... Uh, and I guess that's the big thing. It's like, well, the art isn't always the best. Think of how many different things this book could be used for um, because of all the different things in it. You know, whether you just need a general, you know, you want to lay things out for your players as far as their shopping in the middle of town, or maybe there's some sort of uh, traveling merchants that sort of have gathered to sell things in town, and you have all these roofs, so perhaps there's some sort of assassination attempt going on or foiling of it with people stationed on roofs trying to get a crossbow, you know, to the specific person that's coming through, or whatever it may be. Um, there are definitely plenty of options, because from that we go to this sort of, I want to say dwarven, but, you know, dwarven or fire giant or, yeah, probably almost fire giant kind of forge, um, or, you know, either smithery or armory or whatever it may be, all these weapons out on tables with these, you know, rivers of lava and got some bridges across at specific points. <laughs> you have swords being stored and hot coals. So this is a very different kind of encounter, so just sort of the, the vast, wide use of different things that can be done with this. Um, and again, this one mostly drawn with, looks like the lava is a texture. Um, this one um, looks to be house in building some sort. Uh, I actually almost think... Yes, definitely. This is the second floor above this, it looks like. Um, looks like this is sort of the entryway, and you have this sort of little area in here. Perhaps. And then, you know, stairs going up, which matches these stairs here. You got a Perhaps a dining room, storage area, some sort, trap door, then up here we have a hallway uh, leading into a bedroom, a little side bedroom over here. And the doors aren't as clearly marked as I would have liked, but still, um, I guess that's how that's laid out. Uh, here we have... Uh, sort of an outdoor street area, uh, sort of an administrative office, a almost uh, barracks kind of thing. You got tables and a darkened area in here, which has bunks. And just the way that this is so dark compared to some of that, it's like the bunk room is kept dark so you could sleep. Um, but you know, you have rows of just beds or bunks in here. A general eating area and like a training area. Seems like little barracks and a you know, little administrative office. Which does have a queer door. <laughs> but yeah, in general, each page, because of the way that this is bound, just flips out and lies flat. And uh, I see what they say with minimal. Uh, when they say, you know, minimal grid. The scale on this just feels off. I mean, the actual combat area, I don't know. It's, you know, it just feels smaller than I want a Coliseum to be. 
And if these are the stairs, um, although I suppose when you think about it, this figure takes up five feet on here, but they're not really five feet wide. I don't know. It just feels off on the scale on this, but this is sort of looking like a arena looking place. Uh, we got some rooftops here with little streets below and sort of series of rooftops for whether, you know, an encounter or amongst a chase or... Seems very stealth mission based on this one. Yeah, series of buildings with roofs at night. Ooh. And uh, I guess there's also the point to say of the colors, the printing on it is very pretty. Uh, just bright. Uh, but you have sort of an ice area with broken glacial thing and sort of a path again, just general arctic encounter. Have a battle there. Uh, some open sea or a ship that I recall. Looks like that ship looks familiar. Is the same ship from here only scaled up a little bit? <laughs> Um, but yeah, so you have your ship here with just open sea, what have we got there, and just a plain open sea, which in general seems very simple, but there's plenty of times where that could be useful, so, you know, it's like, that's the kind of thing, like, you could just use, you know, there's no real features, you could use just a blank battle map, but this is just kind of bright, vibrant pretty colors, so it looks nicer than the alternative. Um, graveyard. General. Some dead trees within it. Sort of around, surrounded by forest. Little mausoleum here. Um, with various tombstones or you know, stone slabbed whatever type of graves they are. Um, Obviously, whatever undead encounter or thing needs to go on in the graveyard, you're covered with that. Um, this again is... This one is tavern. Um, lots of seating. A tavern almost in, I guess. So the city seating looks like it probably enters here. Um, which, again, this is cut off here. You don't see this outer wall on this side was a choice. But uh, it's very clear that this is like a wall, for example, when you match it to this one. Uh, and then it, you can see sort of the rug where it enters, you have your bar, um, which presumably there's a door like here maybe that leads back to, you know, there's, looks like a fireplace to both heat the room itself and probably to cook whatever is needed back here. A um, couple little private rooms it looks like. Uh, and then stairs going up to uh, various rooms, a uh, few rooms with multiple beds of different, you know, size beds and quality for different prices and up to larger areas that have little closets even. So just various rooms in the upper floor for an inn. Um, Here's another one that, again, scales seem weird. The blending of textures seems off. Um, but it's, I guess, cliffside with a 20 foot, I guess, you know, it looks like a, supposed to be at the top of a forest, but I guess it's shrubs at this scale. Um, kind of a river and a bridge and a 20 foot border of shrubs around there and a road. Again, with the uh, implied elevation, um, you can definitely have crossbowmen and sort of a uh, ambush point. Here we have a shipwreck. Not sure what that is. <laughs> Almost. Uh, you have your beach, few trees, wrecked sh ship. Maybe is it... St uh, okay, I get it. 
it's stone, and then it goes underwater. So it looks kind of weird on this end. Just took me a minute. <laughs> uh, cavern with torches uh, and crystals. So you got, you know, a few different chambers of cavern here. Some very queer stairs through the cavern and a tunnel. A little storage area here. You got some barrels. Large, mostly open area with a few points for cover. A little area that has stairs going down into some water. Um, crystalline cavern on that end. I'm going to call this one the creepiest sewer ever. Because this texture here, which doesn't blend super well, is skulls. So this is like a necropolis sewer. Which, I mean, you got weird altar here. Black and, I guess this is the idea of it's a hole where it's going deeper down. You got just rows of skulls. Where whatever sewer or ooze is going through. Some sort of dark, whatever, necromancer or whatever's working here is over in this room. And a little maze tunnel through this end. There are a lot of these. Uh, uh, so here we got building some sort. Um, looks like a cauldron potion shop perhaps here that uh, I guess has spiral stairs going up to what looks like a weird arcane computer. Uh, <laughs> And there's some sort of arcane things coming out of the fireplace there, but sort of a study, basically, and then up again to the bedroom. Sort of a mage's building, perhaps. Um, this looks uh, church-ish, cathedral-ish entrance. Lots of pews or seats, uh, rows of candles with uh, sort of a raised altar platform at the far end. Uh, and with the carpeting, they even did the cross to make it feel very cathedral. Looks like entrances on this end as well. So, uh, real stuck together. Getting low enough to wear. And quite broken them up. Um, again, here's, here's another um, marketplace. With, like, crates of fruit, like pumpkins or apples or whatever it may be around, um, but sort of a gathering little market center with some buildings on the outside that do have, again, roofs that could be stood on. Um, but yeah, no, whether, you know, in this one I almost envision, you know, maybe someone walking, you know, crowded marketplace and trying to pickpocket something off of someone or something like that and using it like to make that kind of crowded environment. Um, this is what comes to mind for me there. Uh, here, are these just little shops, it looks like, maybe? Um, maybe this is an alley or street or whatever it may be. Um, but it looks like, uh, yeah, probably an alley between a couple and that maybe the entrances are possibly on the other side. I'm not really sure. Uh, I mean, it looks like you could enter this building here and this building here. But these two look like they've got to be entered elsewhere. Um, I guess it looks like this one enters from here, and this one looks like it enters from there, just based on where the, the lamps are put. Um, but I guess whatever, it looks like you have some sort of weapon shop here, where there's weapons and a sales floor, and then it goes back into a little bedroom where the shopkeeper lives, and the little storage area. Again, this one enters here. Armor shop here. Bedroom storage area. Uh, this one enters here. Um, you got definite shelves here. There is a sword and some books. So miscellaneous shop here. Uh, back into a bedroom and storage area. And then again, this one here. Uh, this one gives very little and has a few display cases, but probably some sort of shop. Bedroom storage area. So. Three very similar, but otherwise whatever kind of shops. So, you know, whether 
I mean, probably not going to use it just to have the players do their shopping and pull out a battle map, but if needing to steal something from the back room of a shop, or plant something into a shop, or whatever it may be, uh, you can certainly use that that way. This is an arcane library. Yeah, that's what this is. Yeah, I, I really can't imagine anything else that this could be. Uh, <laughs> so maybe you enter in from these uh, stairs here or something, and, and you got what look like statues with weapons that have uh, basically lights atop their head. Uh, there are little symbols showing books flying around, thus arcane library, and these mm, probably look like big shelves or cases, perhaps, um, all around with just massive cases of books. Um, you have some sort of maybe are these secret doors? There's some sort of hinging mechanism or something here. Th that is, it's a bookshelf that hinges to a door. Bookshelf or something in front of a statue that hinges to a door. That is what that is designed to be. Obviously, it's very clearly evident on the map, but there you go. Um, Ooh, there's a big tumble of fallen books over in this one, with this room lined with shelves, and they look like almost sort of research stations lined up that continue on that way. Um, anyways, you continue through this big library, and you got some sort of little arcane study with a book out on a desk, and arcane sigils, and a workshop, and some fallen books here. And again, on this side goes into this room, which could also enter through this little study room where you have a few chairs sitting next to each other. So this enters here. There's That looks like another one of the arcane books, only I think you're seeing the back of the book instead of the front of the book. More messes of fallen books and more shelves. So your arcane magical library is what you got there. Um, here we have sort of a noble house. Got a little outdoor courtyard here, or, or I guess the, you enter here, your little audience chamber with seating, a little antechamber, or or rather, an antechamber here, I guess, and then some little side closets and a little closet here. Um, goes back into this sort of room where it would lead to upper levels, sort of receiving, you know, main hall kind of thing, uh, with halls that go off to whatever, other little side rooms that don't have any necessary features. You got a dining room, perhaps. And these just have, like, rugs or something, so whatever's you put in the room, I guess. Uh, there's doors that go out to a back garden. Uh, looks like a little room for four people to sit around a small table, perhaps uh, discuss plans of war or whatnot. I don't know. Um... Little side room here, little bedside, you know, bedroom that's darkened in here. Um, little, just a bunch of different mazes of little rooms, seating areas, and such here, and then that takes us out to that courtyard I mentioned. Ooh, uh, a shipwreck. You know, beneath the waves, and this is one of the ones that I saw. This is like one of the prettiest. This is one of the ones that I saw in the art when I was like, "Yeah, I want to back this." And this is just in general. If you have an encounter underwater, just to have a map that you can just sort of put your guys on and play when they're all swimming in 3D space. Yeah, it's a shipwreck. And obviously you can use whatever, searching the shipwreck or whatever, but really it feels more just uh, something to put down when you're having an underwater encounter. Um, got uh, sort of a little wool camp, and there's plenty of room outside of it to gather forces, you know, as you try and siege this little uh, wool camp. And I call it a wool camp because it's well fortified, Although, for only a handful of people. Um, you know, got a few tents, some weapons and stuff out. Um, 
that it's sort of set against a rock face on one end and has, you know, fortifications that have, you know, they're decently tall, they have ladders going up to them. And, uh, you get little skull, skulls on poles kind of thing saying, stay out, please. (laughs) Uh, this looks like a dungeon. Jail kind of dungeon thing. Um, yeah. Which has, yeah, I guess you enter through here, and you got various cells. Like, I mean, really, they should remove those remains there. I mean, it, that person's dead. You can remove them. They no longer need to be kept in the cell. And then a little area down here, which has a pit, an oubliette, whatever it may be, uh, <laughs> with those bars there. A drain for all of the gore. You know, you get the rack and other torture devices around a chair with spikes, and then a couple other uh, sort of cells. See, they have removed this skeleton, you know, they just did half the job and gave up, I guess. Uh, ooh. This is a cool one. Uh, this is sort of a lava flow, arcane area. Uh, you got a little altar here off on the side, and then this big sigil... There's a heart in the middle of it. Like, this is, you know, some... If you're infiltrating a diabolical... Oh, no, I just noticed that. That, I don't know if you can quite tell. That is like a horn, giant horn skull thing with lava pouring out the eyes. That's, that is cool. Uh, and and that and this is one that actually exemplifies one of the things I do think they did that was pretty cool, is the idea that they took this grid... And you notice, as it goes up against this, because this is clearly above whatever's going on, the grid goes underneath it. Um, which I think is visually pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, this is whatever, arcane summoning area. Uh, so if you're infiltrating a cult that's trying to summon whatever great elder evil into the world, this may be where you're having to go to, to find them. Uh, and then, uh, you know, a field. A few spotty trees. Um, open field. Generally useful. Uh, just plain cobblestone. Again, general useful. Um, you know, I already have plenty of plain maps uh, with grids on them. But uh, for what is, yeah, the back page of it. You know what? If you, If I didn't want to take all my maps... With me, if I just wanted, if I was going to DM somewhere else, this this would be just a general useful there, and that finishes up the book. Yeah, because things like, because I got a big section of shelf that is all my Pathfinder battle maps, and I have, you know, a couple rolled up different kinds of maps, you know, all general useful. But this is a book that you could take with you, along with some DMing supplies, and it gives you a large variety of different various encounter areas that you can just lay out. And I think that, now that I'm thinking about it, and and it really came to mind with this final page of just general stone, whatever, take out your dry erase marker and mark it, or general field, or just open sea, or whatever it may be. Um, you know, there's those. And then there's all the design things. And the design isn't perfect. It's not... I am very used to Paizo, a big company that can get the best of the graphic artists. And even they've had some, you know, I think there was one of them I noticed where one of the graphic pieces, like, there was just, it was just misplaced. Like, it, it had just been messed up. So, I mean, it's not like they're even perfect, um, but I'm definitely used to that style, uh, that quality, and this is definitely, you know, some of these are more spotty than others. Some of them are pr- very cool. Uh, some of them look kind of, eh, you know, whatever. They're uh, obviously a variety of textures all blended together. <laughs> um, but even those are functional. You know, as I look here as, you know, at this as an art piece, it's very much clear to me of, yeah, this isn't ideal, but if I just put it out and I have 
an ogre, and a giant attacking on it, my players aren't necessarily going to be looking at, oh, I don't like how that texture is blended. They're going to be worried about, hey, how do we either destroy or get away from the giant and the goblin hucker? <laughs> so, they're functional, I guess, is the thing. And, yeah, it's like, as far as... Very much say, if you do, whether convention play or, like, friendly local gaming store, like, you go up to the place and you don't have, like, like I am now blessed to have a dedicated gaming room and I have just shelves that I can just store all my stuff. And I have a section of shelves right next to me that has this whole row of different battle maps and... You know, I have things behind me and just all sorts of options right there. If you don't have that, if you're... Everything you go has to go in a backpack. Like when I started playing, everything I would have to play had to fit in a backpack. And I had to walk a mile and a half to the game store every Friday to meet my buddies. And, uh, and don't get me wrong, it was a hiker's backpack. It easily could have fit books of this size, but it was the kind of thing, like, this is, would be a lot easier than just massive some number of things to have something that could just pull out whatever. Whatever different environment comes up, it's got a variety. So that, I'll give it. It definitely has a variety for different uses. So the art's not perfect, but it's definitely got some utility in, like it says, how many? Thirty different maps. From generally useful to specific. It's got maps. Um, and again, uh, these are really cool. I love the gold on them. Very. Uh, but even just the spell effects. Cool. Not as useful for specific spells as I would have liked, but feels more useful for setting up a this area is magic, almost more NPC working on stuff um, than I was expecting. But still, they're beautiful. Anyways, um, so it's definitely interesting, you know. It's an independent studio project, and I think it's like their first project. So for that, they're definitely uh, going for a good start. As far as the quality of the book, uh, I'm impressed. The color saturation is beautiful. Uh, it's like, you know, some of the initial design I uh, wasn't as happy with, but the overall product they produced is impressive, so uh, I do look forward to seeing what they do in the future. Uh, at the point that I'm filming this, I don't know if these are in, like, a retail yet, um, but they do mention immersivebattlemaps.com on the back, so I guess I'll link to that, and maybe you can find out where to pick it up there. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, you can check it out yourself, especially if you need a good to-go set of battle maps. Um, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you thought of this. Uh, if you picked it up yourself, let me know, and then uh, if there's any specific maps uh, that have like cool uses that I didn't think of, comment below and let me know. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>